Hey guys. I know it's been a little while since uh, StarCraft cast, but um, actually there's a good reason for that here. I'll get into it after the uh, introductions. Me is the Blue Zerg in the top right. In the lower left we have Sanctuary as the Red Terran. Uh, this game is going to be Master versus Master. Uh, I had a different replay lined up. It was the uh, first uh, kind of uh, community game night that we brought back. It was kind of impromptu, so I didn't announce it ahead of time. I apologize for that. Um, it was more just kind of, we had a lot of people on the stream, and I said, well, everyone's been asking for a community game night. You guys want to play a free-for-all? And we managed to get eight people together for a free-for-all. So that was pretty cool. Um, and I told a bunch of people I was going to cast it, and then my computer crapped out on me. I had to reformat, and I lost it. So I am so sorry to everyone uh, who I said I was going to cast that. Um, if you guys play another, I'll totally cast that one. <laughs> um... So, anyways, oh yeah, why have I not been casting for this last week? Well, uh, there was that whole me ranting about all the things outside of StarCraft that affect my StarCraft. Um, and I thought about it, and, you know, if I take action on it, then it was a very constructive video. Um, I hope it helps some people who are watching, but for me personally, if I take action on it, it was constructive. If I don't, then it was just pointless ranting, and it was just, you know, me whining like a little baby. So... Uh, this last week, I implemented something. Um, actually, initially, the goal was going to be that I um, reach a certain point in my running before I ever was able to play StarCraft. And the goal was pretty aggressive. It was uh, to be able to run uh, five miles without stopping, which I used to be able to do. So I figured, well, let's, let's get back to where I was in high school. But um, I was talked down from that <laughs> by a couple people who said that they didn't want to have to wait the next six months for me to be able to run five miles without stopping, because that's probably how long it'll take, because I'm in that bad of shape. So the goal was changed to five miles cumulative over the week, uh, and that can be running or walking. Admittedly, it was probably about 40% running, because <laughs> after a while I start to have a, a mild heart attack. I don't know if there's such a thing as a mild heart attack, but that's what it felt like. Um, keel over on the side of the sidewalk and uh, you know get back up and then walk for a while. So... Uh, I, I hit my goal this week, and so here we have it. On Sunday, I'm able to play StarCraft, and um, that's where I'm going to be for a while. I'm going to need to earn the ability to play StarCraft, and uh, I'm going to use that as a motivating factor. Hopefully that, that does something good for me. Uh, thus far, it feels like my play is a lot more comfortable even j after just a week. Um, and, I, I, you know, I just went running slash <laughs> power walking, if you will, <laughs> um, four times this week. But um, already I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with my micro, a lot less tension in the shoulders, so that's really good. And just all around having a lot more fun because my stress level is a lot lower. So, so far so good. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to up the frequency of my StarCraft play, but that's going to require me hitting my goal quicker. If I get to the point that I can run five miles in one, one two-hour run, then <laughs> you'll see me the very next day, but otherwise I'm, it's going to probably have to wait till the weekend until I've hit my goal. Okay, so we see a Reaper opening up here. I did stall this Reaper a little bit with my drone dancing around. I was hoping to get into the uh, refinery, uh, get on the gas and block it, but I wasn't able to do that. But nevertheless, I've got my four Zerglings, so we're feeling pretty comfortable. For this map, I've really been liking the Six Queen Expand. Stay gasless for a nice long while. Even if I see Reaper, generally I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable about that. Reaper's going to scoot up here, but with two Queens and four Zerglings, uh, I'm in a pretty health healthy place here. I'm able to get the block there, keep him from running in the back. And this, a lot of times, I'm finding if you can preemptively block them off, you're not really trying to kill them with the drones. You're trying to prevent them from passing your, your mineral line uh, with the drones, which forces them to turn around and walk right back into queen fire and maybe get a few, uh, get a few uh, bites from the zerglings. So uh, a lot of times that can result in a free, free reaper, which is always good. You lose uh, probably 50 to 100 minerals worth of mining from that pull, but as long as you kill the reaper, you broke even probably. Uh, at least, maybe even came out ahead. Drones coming out way ahead. His natural was a little bit late because he's getting a little quicker Hellions. And this is where I really love the Six Queens. Oh, one other thing worth mentioning. Um, I really apologize in advance on the note of my consistency of streaming. Uh, my computer is on its last leg. Um, I had to completely reformat yesterday, and a couple of the hard drives are going. Uh, so, the motherboard's definitely on its way out, and I've already replaced the motherboard once. Um... And as a result, a couple of the hard drives got hit because the RAID is having trouble. Anyways, um, without getting into all the gory details, if my computer dies, I really apologize. i got to prioritize replacing my car first. Uh, so I may not have a streaming-capable computer 
if that occurs. But I will try and get as many in before I can, but generally when a motherboard starts to go, it's, it's going to go. So we'll cross our fingers that it holds out for uh, you know, maybe, maybe December or so when I'm able to replace it with a proper streaming computer again. Okay, in the meantime, everything's up and running. We have our 45 drones, 28 SCVs. We are doing great e economically. Uh, our opponent's counting on that fast third that is, is so common these days in ZV, uh, ZVT, and we're taking that at seven and a half minutes where we've already got healthy queen count. Uh, sixth queens are out already. I could be going up even higher here soon. Zerglings, eh, they're not really too terribly important for a while. He's hoping he can get that hatchery, but that's where the queens come in. They're not necessarily to prevent damage from occurring to the hatchery. They're just going to shoo them away. And uh, eventually I'll be able to shuffle down some spines and lock this down for good. This queen's getting a little too frisky, and unfortunately he's the one with the transfuse. So that was a big whoop on, whoops on my part. Um, you really don't want to lose any queens here. There's just It's kind of one of those things. It's, it's not crippling. It's not going to set you back too terribly much because you have a, a plethora of queens. But... It's kind of one of those, why would you lose a queen? Because <laughs> Hellions are just so slow to kill queens, and you've got transfuse. So that always just is, it's more one of those that you just feel stupid for. Um, you'll notice I'm pulling all my queens here to fight this. So what I've started to do, because I keep all my queens on a single hotkey, and I find it's really irritating to press 5, then attack move, um, deal with the Hellions, then pull everything back, and blah, 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 all that stupidity, or vice versa. You box three or four queens, and then you don't grab enough, because you really want your six queens, especially if he's really dedicated to Hellions, and if he's buffering with a couple of Reapers. So what I do is, um, when I pull my queens, I go ahead and start a couple more. So that worst case scenario, my queens need to stay on the defense, but the two new ones that produce will pop in time to inject rel in a relatively timely fashion. Sure, I'll miss maybe half of an inject, but that's a lot better than missing two full injects, because he's pinned down my queens for the next three or four minutes. So um, I would say anytime you're committing to a queen-based defense and you don't yet have your spines up, um, that's a really good approach to both keeping your injections live while at the same time allowing yourself to dedicate all six queens to defense of that third if necessary. Now at this point we've got queens all over the place, which is exactly what I want. Um, let's take a look at my view here thus far. Now, I haven't seen too terribly much, but anytime I see a Hellion commitment, I get real spooked about a um, Hellbat drop. And so we see Spore and Spine. <coughs> That's just a standard well in case there's a Widow Mine coming along. And then we just see some Queens hanging out at each mineral line, any, anywhere where, where drones are mining. And actually by the time here that these get started, I need some extra Spores and Spines if I'm not going to have Queens, but here comes the Queens. So um, that's really important. And just keep that in mind anytime you've noticed that your opponent is committing to high ends, because he's going to need to make those work for him, especially if he didn't do any... Uh, damage initially with his with his starting pressure. I mean, here he killed all of one queen. Those Hellions did not pay for themselves at all. So a really logical place for him to go with that would be um, Hellbat drops, but it doesn't look like that's occurred. Now, I'm actually quite a bit behind on drones. Um, this is just because um, I'm still kind of getting the hang of, A, the gas timing for um, this new very spine and spore heavy style, and B, just when it's really good to just spam them out. But I'm erring on the side of caution. I really don't feel like ZVT is a matchup any longer where I'm obligated to have that crazy 80 drones to 60 SCVs or 55 SCVs by 12 minutes. It's just not necessary and it's not safe. Uh, it's the kind of thing where I would rather have just a ton of idle banelings, but know that when that bio push comes, I am plenty prepared with a ton of spines, a ton of banelings, and I can comfortably get that 3-base saturation going. Because once that 3-base saturation is up, that's when your swarm hosts become viable. Two base swarm hosts versus Terran is just absolutely terrible. You don't reach critical mass fast enough. Uh, you can't support any uh, infestors, which I really feel are necessary if they're marine heavy. Um, if they're marauder heavy, you can skip them. But if they're uh, remotely committed to marines, you're going to need them. So, really, we're just sitting here watching this uh, economy, and he's actually ahead of me for quite some time. But if we look at the... Um, you know, game here in a little bit, we're going to see where that efficiency comes into play, and Zerg actually is just more efficient. So we can have a weaker economy. And I uh, I think that's really the reason why every time someone tries Stormhost, myself included, versus Terran, we come out uh, with the misconception that they're terrible. It's because we constantly feel this need that's been built into us by the last three years of StarCraft. Um 
to stay ahead on economy. But even here, I'm 78 drones to 71 SCVs. I'm still behind. I mean, I'm, I'm not behind on gas, but I'll be behind on minerals the entire game that, at, at that rate because mules are worth so many SCVs. And that's just fine. And we notice, you know, I get a healthier drone count then. More spores and spines. Just keep repeating that process. So this is um, kind of something I'm proud of because we're seeing that before and after that I did a few uh, weeks back. Let's stick it. Um, this has turned into a fundamental aspect of my play, especially once I recognize my opponent as bio. I get in, I see a couple barracks with reactors, that's all I need. Now, he could be two-fact uh, biomech rather than one. That's fine. Um, spores and spines are still going to be just phenomenal. Uh, they buy me time to especially defend any of my uh, tertiary bases, my third, my fourth, my fifth, while swarm hosts and spines hold my main and natural. And that's just a situation that Terran is inevitably going to put us in every single game. They're going to pressure your main and natural while drops take care of the rest. And uh, we keep losing those spare bases because of the fact that we don't have spores and spines supporting our main and natural and uh, swarm hosts at the same time also supporting them. So we see the same here in the main. Uh, this is because the doom drop in the main is, is almost an inevitability by, by this stage of the game. He's going to push, he's going to see swarm host, he's going to go, oh, let's doom drop. It's just a natural reaction. Now look at how behind on supply I am. That's, again, I mean, if we, if we were to consider each spore and spine that I have and give it a supply value of probably two, that's probably realistic given how much it costs. Maybe three, actually. Uh, if, we, if we factor in the drone, we're looking at 150. Eh, two to three, 2.5 almost. Then we'd probably be even supply. But um, these spores and spines are actually putting me in a very supply efficient place because I can survive all day long since I can metagame him and assume he won't be going tanks for a while. Uh, he just doesn't. Terran players just don't. Uh, they, they only go tank when they're going back these days. It just It's silly, but it, it is what it is, so we'll capitalize on it. So it's really cool. I, I more and more, I'm I'm trying to make sure that this is something that I remind myself because when I lose, it's invariably because of this. All right, so here's that split, and getting the good fungal here. Get the follow up, and there we go. Apologize if my casting is a little bit predictive. I played this yesterday. I was really hoping to cast that free for all, but I still wanted to have something to cast for you guys. And he's got some idle units here. He was trying to get away from that fungal. Looks like he was a little preoccupied. And here we go, I'm able to pull up and deal with that drop. All the while, the infestors and swarm hosts behind this healthy count of spines are able to uh, hold, the, hold the front. So, pretty good hold. We're actually ahead on economy now, which is fine. It's not necessarily where I want to be. I'd rather be equal economy, but nevertheless, it's not bad for a little while. And uh, we can assume our opponent's going on to four base, but let's go ahead and switch over to top view since kind of past the uh, earlier scouting phases. So he is just finally establishing that fourth. And that's fine. We're staying on equal base count. Terran opponent feels like they're ahead. We know as a Zerg player we're ahead because we have Swarm Hosts. And uh, pretty pretty great place to be. So now with our Terran opponent with Sanctuary, uh, I feel like this was the critical point when he needed to do something um, aggressive. Now, that's you know obviously why I'm spamming these out so hard, but I still think my main in particular was a little bit vulnerable. Now, I don't make my lair at my main anymore versus Terran, so he's going to take out some Evo Chambers. He's going to take out the pool, uh, but I try to put all my tech structures at my natural now. But nevertheless, I think this was still uh, a viable option, even with the spores and finds. He can start up back behind my hatchery. Saddle drones need to be fixed. That's bothering me. Anyways, <coughs> so we're gradually pushing forward here. Uh, I was expecting that my opponent was going to become aggressive, as, as many do, but he didn't, so we're going to capitalize on that. And once we get to the point that even just the slightest little bit of contact is made by the Locust, we're, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, we want to be really careful about how we gauge this. We really only need two to three volleys from the Locust for each spawn to pay for itself. And it's very delicate because you're going up against a very highly mobile bio army. Um, they can lift in medevacs, they can stem forward. Either one of those are great options. Well, I should say they'll, they'll typically want to stem around, not forward, and dodge the Locust entirely. So we do really only want a couple volleys from those Locusts to make contact, and that's all we need. Now, we're behind by 1-1 uh, on upgrades, so our Locusts aren't quite as cost-effective as they could be, but they're going to be fine, especially with these Infestors escorting. This, um, I'm finding, is, is really helpful. Going to keep those Widow Mines from escaping. It's also going to detect them. 
And it's going to bait moves like this, which I find to be really great too, because now we're going to go ahead and get a good fungal in. We're going to get some more damage with the Locust. And even if he does get away like that, we're still eating up some medevac energy. We're forcing him into yet another kind of uh, awkward position here where he has to engage the Locust. So we get a Marauder. That's really all we need. We just need one or two units every spawn. Um, our opponent's actually ahead economically, but watching those resources lost <laughs> tells a completely different story. So, uh, pretty happy with how this game's going so far. Just getting all sorts of great trades. The Infestors have paid for themselves, the so Swarm Hosts have absolutely paid for themselves. And we're gradually just shuffling up some Spores and Spines to solidify our position. What this really is, is not necessarily, um, to babysit these Swarm Hosts right at the point that they're spawning but to give us a point to retreat to if necessary. All right, so he decides this is the time to move forward, but that timing is really tricky. And uh, in this case, he, he walks right into a spawn of, uh, of Locust and another very cost inefficient trade. We're now up to a three to one uh, advantage here. So we'll switch it over to production. I know people like to see that. Okay, so um, at this stage, I'm loading up a whole bunch of Swarm Host for drops. And I admittedly, I hadn't played for the entire week. This has been a really strong play for me, but um, let it be known, it's not good when you're rusty. Uh, I'm just going to outright call it now that I do not handle this very well. Pathing here was horrible. They need to be up here. Um, let me pause for a second. What that play is, is um, you're going to use the Queen's Roaches and remaining Banelings, along with the Infestors, to go ahead and keep pressure in the front. All the while, you're going to want to drop Swarmos here. Swarmos here. That's what these are for. Swarmos here, and optimally I should have probably kept four to six here, so that now I've taken one point of contact and turned it into four, um, four to five actually, and so I'm cutting off his re reinforcements up top, and then I'm pressuring him in, in three to four different places here. All the while, the the expendable army, the Roach Queen Baneling, is still also working on the front, and this is something you can do to capitalize on a time when you know your opponent has lost quite a bit of his army and he's having to rally new. So he's actually pretty good on supply here after the losses I just took. But a lot of that is under construction because we see he's loaded down with barracks. So in terms of actual army that's in play, I'm still ahead even after the losses I took. And, and before the losses, I was way, way ahead. So um, that's the concept. It works out really, really well um, if I'm on top of my multitasking. But... <laughs> When you're rusty, it, it's not so great. But it also allows you a lot of flexibility because at that point you've got the overlords hanging out at your swarm host at any location. And so rather than shuffling them around with control groups like you would uh, when they're consolidated, you're instead going to go ahead and just pick them up the moment you see a bio army pushing through the locust and relocate. And he's going to constantly be out of position. So he's pushing through, but you know I'm going to go ahead and sack my queens to buy some time. I maybe should have pulled them back, but given that Marauders can slow them down, that's a tough sell. Um, but this advanced Spore and Spine positioning really has given me quite a bit to work with. At this point, they're just being sacrificed to buy time, but they're buying a ton of time. And we still do have some Spines back home, just in case. I did rebuild some of those. I wish I had a couple Spores here, because something needs to shoot down the Metabacks. But nevertheless, um, not a lot of army left for him. He is maxed, but... We're going ahead and getting that cleaned up, and we're finally getting our um, upgrades taken care of. I actually forgot about my 3-3. Three, three. I thought it was already on 3-3. Three, three. So that's not so good either. 1-1 one, one behind bio for uh, any Swarm Host-based army is, is really tricky. Uh, you want to end that as quickly as possible. There's going to be a short period of that. but Nevertheless, um, this is his opportunity, but given all the spines I've got, and given that I still have some energies on the infester, energy on the Infestors, there's not a lot to work with. Six Swarm Hosts that I completely forgot about here. Um, but again, my multitasking's terrible. I get one Overlord shot down entirely. I'm dropping Swarm Host in range of detection of those um, turrets. Just all around, not good. <laughs> so things are looking grim. Uh, and this is just kind of something I need to keep working on. This is a new play that I've been working on ever since I saw TLO pull off some really cool stuff with drops. And I said, you know, I think I can do that in a more um, dedicated, multitasking intensive fashion. Because kind of what he was doing was... Um, or just drop them and forget about them, and I'm hoping to use them more as you would a um, Marine Medevac uh, multitasking drops or multi-prong drops. So um, it's going to be something that's going to be a work in progress for probably months, <laughs> and 
for now, it's going to be one of those things where people are going to be like, oh, that was cute, but he just almost lost the game, or he just lost the game because of it. So, um, But yeah, we've stabilized, uh, mostly because of those spines uh, still, being, still being there ready for us. Even if he had pushed out, we would have pushed him back pretty easily. <coughs> and I was able to keep him tied back with my swarm host, as, as is. If he pushed out, he would have probably lost uh, one of his bases to those remaining six swarm hosts. So, uh, he takes out my fifth. That's fine, I wasn't really working on it yet as far as mining is concerned. And we're at a stage where, uh, as long as I can keep my remaining swarm host alive, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. My creep spread's starting to reach a point here where it's denying in his attempt at taking a fifth. And uh, we're still probably... Actually, no, we're behind on losses after that throwaway. Especially with all the overlords, so... That's not good, but given all the swarm hosts we have and we're about to hit 3-3, we're going to be able to recover that pretty quickly. Alright, so this is actually a great place to be. So we've got our army coming in. We're giving him a reason to commit, and he does take that commitment, and that's absolutely not what he wants to do. Um, but especially once the infestors arrive, he's just in so much trouble. We still have that 2-2 disadvantage, or that 1-1 disadvantage, but it just doesn't even matter. The, the synergy between Hydra... Um, actually, no queens at this point, but... Well, one queen. <laughs> the synergy between Locust Hydra an infester is is just phenomenal. We didn't even have to wait for the spines. Uh, the reason I pushed that is because uh, A, he was engaging in range of my swarm host, and uh, that's really what I wanted at that point. If he sees those spines, he's very likely to turn around. And that was a point where I had just maxed out. I was very confident in my ability to directly engage that army. Marine Marauder, it's, it's very potent until max. Once both players are maxed, uh, in the case of swarm host, uh, swarm host infester, you're far more cost efficient. So, uh, two, two, 200, 200 is when you want the direct engagement. Anything prior to that is when you want to be dancing around and just trying to base some bad, uh, bad spots like this for him. He could have maybe pulled back. Um, I think that was a case where he could have pulled back and I probably would have just taken out the sensor tower. <coughs> one bungle for one widow mine, not really great, but I'd rather get out of the way so that my next spawn can uh, move forward a little healthier. I do love that Locust actually um, can tank a widow mine. Uh, for such a small unit, you would you would think they would all die from a single widow mine shot, but only the target dies, so that's pretty cool. And this is a point now where my Hydras can utilize the swar the Locust Buffer and get in some free shots as well. It's really critical that the pullback is um, very precise, though, because the moment those Locusts expire, the Hydras are extremely vulnerable, and he can have half your army strength in um, bio. You know, you can have you know 20... 20 Hydras versus probably 20 Marines and some Medivacs, and even though you are heavily favored in terms of resources, he's still going to clean up, probably. <laughs> Alright, so at this point, Sanctuary's feeling like uh, the game's already over. He goes ahead and goes for one last push forward. But, um, yeah, I mean, what can I take from this? Well, um, don't go for the drop play unless it's something I'm confident in my ability to, to hit the multitasking on. And I may actually just start approaching this a little differently. Rather than let's load up all my swarm hosts and, and drop in this really grand fashion, which feels cool, but it's one of those things where the moment your multitasking slips a bit, you throw away half your swarm hosts for free. Instead, what if I just shave off six? Um, you know, one spawn occurs, I shave off six, and I relocate it. Another spawn occurs, I shave off another six, and I relocate it. And I do that until I eventually got 24 swarm hosts spread out over four to five positions, just all over the place. Maybe some up here cutting off reinforcements, just outside of turret range, some up here cutting off reinforcements, and a few others uh, at key positions, putting them in, in uh, a couple different pincers. Um, if I can make it something that's gradual, then I never give my opponent the room to say, oh, there wasn't a locust spawn there. I have a window of opportunity. He's doing something. And I also... Uh, don't run the risk that my multitasking slips and I throw everything away. Or I have idle swarm hosts for a few spawns. So, I think that's the biggest thing I can take away from this, is that that might be a better approach, especially in a case like this where my tempo is just so strong. And when I skip that locust spawn with all of my swarm hosts all at the same time, I've just given away that tempo that I've spent the last four to five locust spawns building up. And I've given him that window of opportunity that he was able to capitalize on there. So, um... That's that's it for this one. It may be a week before my next StarCraft cast, but the D&D um, &D cast is still going to occur. Well, not cast, but the D&D &D game. We had to reschedule uh, it last night because my computer was busy having problems. So uh, I was busy resuscitating it for most of the day yesterday. But we're looking at 
tentatively Thursday for the stream, and the YouTube video should be up that night or the day after. Okay, thanks a bunch for watching, everybody.